In this video, we'll see how to quickly optimize the state of polarization into a device using the Keysight N7785C polarization scrambler. When making on-wafer measurements of integrated photonic devices, it's often necessary to launch the light in a specific state of polarization, to align to a grading coupler, for example, and to do this quickly to reduce the measurement time. The Keysight N7785C contains a high-speed lithium niobate electro-optic polarization controller, which can change state of polarization in times on the order of tens of microseconds. It is programmed with Skippy commands with its LAN or USB interfaces. The instrument's firmware contains an algorithm that will optimize the polarization iteratively based on feedback values sent to it with a simple Skippy command. Feedback for an optical-to-optical -optical device would come from an optical power measurement of the output power from the device sent to the PC and the feedback value calculated from that and sent to the polarization scrambler. This is repeated over and over until the maximum power, or it could be the minimum power, it can be set up that way, uh, is found on the optical power meter. This is simple to implement with just a few Skippy commands. If instead the device is optical to electrical, the same optimization can be done, but this time by measuring the current out of the device with an SMU or current meter. Programming the optimization is fairly simple. The first step is to set the basic parameters for the optical power meter, or if you're measuring current, the SMU. For example, setting the correct range, setting the units. This needs to be done in linear units. Many optical power meters can read in dBMs or watts, so set it to watts, a linear scale. Uh, you might set the averaging time. If you're using an SMU, you may be setting the DC bias voltage to the photodiode. Once that's set up, we send this command to the N7785C to turn on the stabilization and optimization mode. The next defined two variables. One is our target, either our target power that we're trying to get to or target current in the case of a current measurement. Uh, for example, uh, 0.01 watts optical power or 10 milliwatts. The next is the uh, gain value. Gain is used to scale the feedback value to a, a reasonable size. Uh, good values for the algorithm are between 1 and about 10 or 20. You don't want it too large or too small, and it may take a little trial and error to, to find the right gain value for your device. Next, we go into a loop where you read the optical power meter or the electrical current and put that, in, that reading into a variable power or current. Next, calculate the feedback value. It is basically the difference between the target and the measured power or current. So how far away is our current uh, power or current measurement from the target that we've set here in this variable? We scale this by, again, with the gain value to, to be somewhere in the range of 1 to 10 or 20, somewhere in there, not too big, not too small can optionally divide this all by the target plus the power value or current value. Uh, that causes it to uh, decrease a little faster. The algorithm is seeking to minimize the feedback value. That is, if it sees that the current, the feedback value that it receives is smaller than the previous one, last time through the loop, it knows it's optimizing the polarization in the correct direction. That means the measured power or current is getting closer to our target where we're trying to go. If the feedback value compared to the previous one gets larger, that would mean that the measured value is getting further, has gotten further away from the target. It's going in the wrong direction. It will try a different direction. We send the feedback value to the N7785C with this command. This command is stab colon SOP space 
and then four values separated by commas. This command is used for a number of different uh, modes in our polarization products. For this mode, the first three values are always zero, and the fourth is the calculated feedback value. After that's sent, we make it execute and move the polarization with this command trig space one. We repeat this loop over and over and might exit in a number of different ways. You might find that it takes a certain number of loops to get to the power or current that you want for your device and exited that on, on account. You might also test that, uh, for instance, the measured power or current is within a certain percent of your target. Or you might stay in the loop endlessly and keep optimizing. For example, if something happens in the setup that disturbs the polarization, it'll re-optimize automatically. When done with this mode, you exit by the, sending this command. Next, we'll take a look at an actual example with hardware that runs these commands. Our demonstration setup uses a linear polarizer as the device under test. It will seek to maximize the power through the linear polarizer to the optical power meter. The example program will graph the power measured through the polarizer on the optical power meter on the left as well as the feedback value being sent to the N7785C over on the right. We'll also display the instantaneous power reading from the power meter, as well as the, uh, the loop count and the elapsed time. The tunable laser has been set to a power that will give us about six milliwatts at the power meter when we're completely aligned with the polarizer. We'll set the target value to a little bit higher than that, 10 milliwatts. So the program is, and the N7785C is always trying to uh, go to a higher value. We'll run 100 loops in this measurement, and the power meter has been set to a range of 10 dBm or 10 milliwatts maximum, and has an averaging time of 10 milliseconds. So we'll go ahead and start the measurement. And we can see it took about two seconds to run our 100 loops. We reached our value of about six milliwatts. Actually reached that at about half that time. The marker here is at uh, six milliwatts. It's at the uh, 51st, or I can move it to the, the 50th loop, the, the 50th time. And it's already at six milliwatts, so about one second for it to get to uh, the full, full alignment with the polarizer, uh, the full six milliwatts of power. We can see that, as mentioned, the feedback value, it tries to lower that, so it is dropping as we increase in power, and it's getting closer to the uh, correct state of polarization. We'll now take a look at how the N7785 can be used to continuously stabilize the state of polarization. We've set the loop count high so the program keeps running. We'll go ahead and start. We've already optimized from the last run at, uh, at full alignment to the, to the polarizer, but now we'll move the single mode fiber uh, that's leading up to the polarizer to change the state of polarization. And you can see the algorithm very quickly readjusts the polarization controller to get aligned to the polarizer again. We'll move it again. See the power drop, but very quickly recover, meaning we, we very quickly realigned uh, the polarization to the polarizer, to the correct state. That concludes our video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. You can find more information on the N7785C on our website at the link shown here.